chapter 3, or chapter 1, verses 3 to 9. Hear the word of God. Blessed be the God and the creator of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, God has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even now for a little while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen Christ, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believed in him and rejoice with an indescribable and gl glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Yes. So may God have blessed you this reading. You may be seated. Can somebody turn this light on for me? I'm having a hard time seeing it. This is oh, let there be light. Let there be light. Now, this Sunday after Easter, of course, is the first Sunday after Easter, and it's where the doubters come out. In the gospel reading for this week, we read about the story of Thomas, who questions the fact of the actual resurrection of Jesus. Now Thomas wants to specifically see the scars on the hands of Jesus. Jesus came out then to where the disciples were meeting in that upper room a time later and said, met with the disciples and came in to where the disciples were and told the disciples that blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Thomas gives a powerful acknowledgement here. Most of us understand, our, our, when we think of Thomas, we think of doubting Thomas. But the amazing thing, this caught my eye this week. The powerful acknowledgement of, of Thomas calling Jesus God. Thomas didn't call him teacher or even Messiah, but Thomas called him Almighty <coughs> God. Wow, I never, I mean, all the years I've been reading that, I didn't see that before. Thomas called him God. Yes. Now, this doesn't sound like doubt to me, but if, of course, he saw the real deal in Jesus. Jesus was the real deal and is the real deal. Now I tell you, saints, I believe God is revealed in ways that all of us can understand. If we would just be open to the possibilities, I am thoroughly convinced that we are blessed as we believe. I know for a fact that I am blessed. I know for a fact that you are blessed. Blessed to know that we are called resurrected people. I believe in the resurrection of Christ, not because I've seen it in a movie. <laughs> How many of you have seen those movies? <laughs> or not just because I've read about it in the Bible. But I believe because I have experienced Christ in resurrected ways in my own life. In ways that nothing else is humanly possible to define it. 
Now, there's a lot of people that don't believe or doubt that God is real. But I'll tell you as sure as I'm standing here, God is real. Today can mark a transition point for many. Because, well, because Easter is over. And yet we're still here. We're here. We're, I'm thankful. We know the importance of not just being a people of faith on a specific day, like Easter or like Christmas. Now, don't get me wrong. I enjoy having a full house. And how about it? we had standing room only last week? I love that because where people are gathered, the presence of God is really full. But you know what? Even if it was two people, the scripture says, where two or more are gathered in my name, I will be there. I will be there. And so we can have a good time, just the two of us, or the many of us. It doesn't matter. Because God's going to show up either way. I pray that each and every day that God would draw us closer and keep us together in worship to, to really so that we can exemplify how important this it is that we join together in worship. And it but it takes believing on the rest of the days in the meantime. It's not just about an Easter faith. Now I have an Easter faith, but my Easter faith carries me throughout the days. Amen? Amen. It takes believing. It takes coming into God's fullness. It comes to it takes coming into that holiness of God where God knows us in a more intimate way. Now, while the spe spectacle of Easter, uh, not spectacle, but the specifics of Easter are important, it might have been a spectacle to some. <laughs> <laughs> They're important because of the resurrection and all that it entails. But the proof is in the rest of what happens. You see... The proof is in the rest of what happens. Jesus rose from the dead and came and met with the disciples and told them, I've, I've got to ascend in a minute. Well, probably in a little bit. But this is, this is my version. i gotta ascend. I got to ascend in a minute. And so you're going to have to go on and you're going to have to do these things uh, that I've told you to do. You're going to have to do what I've get, given you examples of doing. You're going to have to go out and you're going to heal the sick and and um, you're going you're gonna to lay hands on people and they're going to recover. You're going to have to work out some details. You're going to have to be a mentor. You're going to have to rise up. And you know what Jesus said? He said, greater things will you do in my name because I am ascending. Greater things will you do. Sometimes I think that we think that all the greater things are already done. <laughs> the greater things are the things that God has yet to do. I believe that. I believe that greater things are the things that God has yet to do. And maybe one of us in this room is the, is the life-changing uh, thing that's gonna, that God's going to use, or the person that God, God's going to use to change the world. <clears throat> there, are, there are many people who believed on that day when Jesus came back. But what happened? What happened when the rest of life transpired? When time went on, when potholes came, when tri when trials came, as we read in, in, in the scripture in, for today, so, some of them turned their back on Jesus. Some of them went back to their old disbelieving and apathetic ways. And we have fo folks that, that do that too. You know, Jesus knew what Jesus was talking about. Some of our folks do the exact same things. But I want to just nudge us today. I don't want to push you. Well, maybe. I want to nudge you a little bit. I want to nudge you a little bit today to make the effort not to retreat back into the old ways. I want to just encourage you to, to, to experience something different in, and to, to experience God in, in, a, in a way that you've never experienced God before. 
You know the saying, let today be the first day of the rest of your life? That's right. That's what I'm asking. You, you know, we've all fallen short of God's glory at times. But I'm encouraging you to let today be the first day of the rest of your life so that the, the, when the days come, you will find yourself in wholeness and in the holiness that God desires for you. Because truly God desires us to be whole people of God. Not part, but whole. God desires you, you to be a whole person of God. And when you want to quit or shrink back or go back into old habits, listen, I hope that you're going to hear my voice. <laughs> I hope that you're going to hear my voice saying to you, Be strong. Okay. Hey, now. <laughs> be strong. You can do it. Remember, you are moving from brokenness to healing. God is not done with you just yet. You're working, your work is a work toward perfection. You can do it. You can overcome. You can be all that God wants you to be with the blessed help of the risen one. I'm sure some of you are going to come back and say, Pastor, you... Uh, I do hear your voice, and it's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Just turn it off. <laughs> now, I would submit to you this morning, saints, that there are many counterfeits running around. It reminds me of work that I used to do when I was working for Reverend Ed in the, the Sacramento uh, thrift store called Out of the Closet Boutique. And um, we had these, we had these, we had these pens, and we had these pens. And anytime somebody would give you um, a twenty or a fifty, or we never hardly got hundred dollar bills, but but you know sometimes we would, when you'd have to take those pens and you run it over the cro the front of the the bill, and it would come up, and if you would, you'd know it was counterfeit. Well. We don't have pins that we can run across people to see if they're counterfeits. <laughs> I did come across a few bills that were counterfeit, and they're, they're, it's really sad because those fake bills ruin it for a lot of folks. I don't know about you, but I want to be genuine in my faith. That's right. I want to be genuine and I want to be faithful. When God run, runs over me, with the, with the pen. <laughs> I want to say, I want it to say, well done, thy good and faithful servant from, from the word of Timothy. I sometimes close my eyes. I close my eyes. And I, and I dream about the things of God. You know, sometimes we need to close our eyes to see more clearly. Does that make sense to you? I, I, I think that um, when I close my eyes, I can see God and and see God more clearly. And I, I close my eyes and I dream of the blessings that are yet to be mine and yet to be ours. Because I think that God has a whole storehouse of blessings for us right. if we choose to receive them. I close my eyes and I open my heart because I know that God is moving with us. And God is creating in us something so great that we will not be able to contain it. As Esther says, we will not be able to contain it. No, I don't think that's Esther. But if you could just close your eyes with me for a minute, I invite you to close your eyes and think about, think about the one thing that you know that God is calling you to do. And if you don't know the one thing that God's calling you to do, then you're mission is to find out what it is that God is calling you to do. And I just encourage you to dream big. Because, you know, if we're dreaming and we can accomplish it in our own selves, it's not a dream big for God kind of deal. Because God specializes in the impossible. See, if we think that it's possible, then it's possible because we think it is. And the, th the thing is, God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can think or ask. And so, if you have a pen, or if you can remember, or if you have a phone and you want to put down 
write down what it is that God's letting you dream of? What is it that you want to accomplish? What is it the one thing that God's calling you to do? I just want to remind you that you are a resurrected person. That you are a person of the Most High God. That you can do anything. You can do anything. And I pray that you can practice closing your eyes so that you can see more clearly so to what God is calling you to do. I want to close with this story because I, I know that, you know, for some of us, we've been through a few trials. I want you to know the best is yet to come. There was a woman that was diagnosed with a terminal illness and given about three months to live. And she asked her pastor to come to her house. And I've been to the, on these kind of pastoral visits. And it's not always fun. But, you know, I would rather know what the wishes are ahead of time than have no clue. The pastor decided to talk to her about the things that, that she wanted, the songs that she wanted to be sung, and, and how she wanted the scripture read, and, and, and all of that stuff, and which outfit, you know, she wanted to be buried in. And, and then she said, one more thing, Pastor. I want to be buried with a fork in my hand. Oh, okay. And the pastor was like really surprised. Oh, a fork. The woman ex explained, in all of my years attending church, we had church socials and potlucks and dinners. I always remember that when the dishes would come, the main dishes were, were, were there, but all of a sudden they, they would be cleared. Someone would inevitably say to someone else, keep your fork. It was my favorite time of dinner because I knew something better was coming, <laughs> like velvety chocolate cake or deep dish apple pie or carrot cake or something wonderful. So I want people to see me there in my casket with my fork in my hand and wonder what is with the fork. <laughs> and then I want you to tell them to keep the fork because the best is yet to come. The pastor's eyes welled up with tears and joy as he bid the woman goodbye and he realized that she had a better grasp of heaven than he did and knew something better was coming. At the funeral when people asked him why she was holding a fork, of course the pastor told them of the conversation that he had had with this woman before she passed. And he said he could not stop thinking about the fork. And he knew that they probably would not be able to stop thinking about it either. And he was right. I want to remind you, saints, to keep your fork. Keep your life. Because something better is yet to come. Amen. Blessings and honor to you in this day. Amen.